Hey there. Today I'm going to do a graph that I use quite a bit. I do a lot of top work on trees. In other words, for my top work, it's not cutting down way down low and doing a graph. I'll cut branches and I'll tag into the branches, but I always use the same variety, just one variety for that tree because apparently it's hard to get that tree to take uh, establishment of multiple varieties of pawpaws. The graft I'm going to do, now Neil Peterson has a video uh, with KSU that I had watched and it was called a uh, bark inlay graft. Well, the bark inlay graft, what he's going to do is he's going to cut a scion wood and he's going to cut a wedge and then he'll size the scion up to what he cut off and he'll pull this flat down and then he'll stick a scion in there and then he wraps it up but he stabilizes it back there because you've got two weak points right here. I, what I did was I looked at what he was doing and I learned this by watching what he was doing. I've learned a lot by watching a lot of people. And what I'm going to use is just a regular utility knife. Now all the tools that I have have been sterilized. And what I'm going to do is, is uh, just take a pair of snips and what happens whenever you have small scion that you have to work with? You know, the, the old thing that, you know, the thing that a lot of people say is that you've got to match that up just as close as you can. And it's just to show you that grafting doesn't have to be intimidating. So what I'm going to do right here at the very end of this piece of scion wood is what they call the terminal bud. This is where it will keep growing. This up here is your terminal. That's all terminal. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to utilize the terminal bud, not the terminal bud, but the very end, just for demonstration, because I try not to, because I try not to uh, get too small. It's got good color to it. And then I'm not even going to pay attention to what I'm doing right here. I'm just going to come up here, and I got a one-sided shear, so I'm just going to cut on the one side, and I can take it down low, and I'm just going to snip it right there. Now, if you take a look at that, you can see that, man, that's awful small. How in the wide world of sports is that going to work? I've used this quite a bit on top working trees, and it's been real successful. The thing about it is, don't get too big of a stock. And the reason being is you want that scion to be able to callus. Sure, we could do a cleft and just touch one side and it'll work just the same. But this is just like I said, a graft that I started doing that I personally like to deal with. Get rid of this little tiny piece. That terminal bud does me no good. I've got two buds is all I got. Now, what I do, and everybody does things differently. I look at things a little bit differently than some people do. I take out a little razor blade and I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to clean this off just a little bit. And the reason why I'm doing that is because my mind says I just crushed that. So I want to get rid of that crushing. And in the same token, because the pot's going to be standing up, I want just a little bit of an angle. Not much. Just a little bit. I want that sloping down here. And the reason for that is because of water runoff. All right. And then what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take the knife and I'm going to come back here on the high end of the root stock and I'm just going to do a small slip down. And then I'm going to just try to peel it back here. That's it. Is that just the bark? That's just the bark. But right under the bark, you're going to have the phloem, which that here sends the energy down into the tree. And on the other side of that is your cambium. That's where the contact must be made. And on the other side of the cambium is the zymus, which the energy is sent back up to the tree. Now, I, I cut towards me. And I try to cut as thin as I can doesn't always work out well and I cut just a, a little wedge 
One side or both? Both sides. Now, one thing that I have done is you just barely scuff the back side. It's going to be on the outside for that cambium contact. But since it's so small, it's not going to make a difference. Now, what I did here, I got a little bit of a jaggedness going on. And I'm just going to snip the very tip of that. Make it nice and straight because when I put it in there, I don't want any jagging to go on with it. So is that in a wedge shape now? It's in a wedge shape. Actually, this one side might be a little bit better. Okay. A wedge shape, just like that. I'm going to do is, is I'm going to put the bark back just a little bit where I can get in there and stay low with it. And the one side, I want to make sure that it's touching on the one side. It's just like that. You can see the opening. And it's just touching. And then take a rubber band and I'm going to wrap her up. For me, rubber bands are hard to start and it's because I don't have nimble fingers. But once I get it started, I'm going to pull the rubber band tight. Give it one wrap, two wrap, then I'm going to catch it because the rubber band is twisting. I don't want it to twist. Let's keep it flat. Give it one wrap, another wrap. Now in some cases, I'll put two rubber bands on this, and this is because of wind. Because I want that tight fit, I want it to stay put. And I'm only going to do one rubber band on this one. And I try to figure out where my knot is going to be. And I'm going to put my thumb back here. This is a trick that I, I've been watching somebody do. And I've been trying hard to learn it. I'm getting close. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up over the thumb. Oop, oop. Come up over the thumb. And then come back behind the thumb. And I'm going to roll it off. And sometimes I hit it just right, sometimes I don't. But, you know what? I believe with enough practice I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cliff. That's Cliff's trick. I've been watching him like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> been panting the whole time thinking, how am I going to get this off? Anyways. And something else I've watched the man do, and I'm going to try and copy it as well, because it works. Parafilm. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch the parafilm or far as I can. And then I was trying to wrap and wrap and wrap and I had a hard time figuring it out and I had to watch him some more. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I notice he does, he lays the parafilm on top of the side. And then it gives him the ability to work down here. Another rubber band on that after one. So hold it tight enough. That hold back, grab him, hold it. I want to make sure everything's covered up. You cover the whole side on with that grab him? Yes. You like don't want nothing. Like a little greenhouse? Yes. Yep. You don't want to lose no moisture. Now, something else I like to do, all right, I got a stripper type parafilm here, and there's a reason why I do it. And it's this one. I got a little bit thicker parafilm here. And, and the reason why I use this, 
Sometimes you stretch, sometimes you don't. Is that buddy tape or just paraffin? This is just plain paraffin. My hat record buddy tape. Yeah. Too expensive. <laughs> What's that, buddy tape? Yeah. yeah. Now, where I made the union, the top, the top is important. I want that top to stay covered up, and that's the reason why I'm breaking out the parafilm. I don't want any moisture getting in there at all. I want to keep it as fresh and as moist as I possibly can. Now, earlier this year, I worked a, a top work the tree. I put nine grafts in that tree, and of the nine grafts, three of them were cut, the rest of them was this graft right here. And one of the things I come to find is, is as the bud is trying to collect the energy in which the tree, being a good sized tree, it's going to offer up an awful lot of energy. A lot more than what these seedlings will by far. And I want to make sure, look, the slit that I made, I want to make sure that's covered up also because I don't want no moisture whatsoever. And so we don't have a confusion here. This was a chapelle. Got the bag right here to prove it. And what I'm going to do is stick it back in there. So don't get mixed up with the other variety. All right? Keep track of your scion wood. And another thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and put a tag on here. Now Ron Powell, uh, I don't know how many of you know who he is. And one of the things I noticed that he did, and it works because I did it last year, he used a pencil. The sun won't bleach out the lead. I know how to spell it, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want you to have to look again. <laughs> KSU Chappelle. Did, did David Chappelle? Five, twenty, twenty-three. I'm going to mark the date. And anything that you draft, you want to mark so you can keep track of what it is that you uh, just did. I found this graph to work very well. I'll tell you a story. Uh, last year I did a graph on a uh, tree. I converted it over to a, a variety called uh, cannabis. And it's a variety that's been uh, put out by Tom Wall. It's a cross between Shenandoah and Susquehanna. Peterson Paul calls him. He's got a number of uh, siblings. I used this graph on here, on that tree. Two miles west of my house, a tornado came down. It tore up a jump. Now I thought, oh man, oh man, I had to get up in the morning and check that tree. It was already pushing growth. I never lost one uh, piece. To me, that's a good record. Now, I had one I did this one the same year. It was on the ground and the tree was about that big around. I even had it braced up. And when you know, it got demolished. It, disrupted it, didn't break it off. It disrupted it enough that it separated the cambium from the scion. And it already had growth. Because I grabbed the dabbling uh, the same year. Any questions? The one you just did, is it the in inlay? Is that what that kind of graft is called? Inlay. Just inlay. one slit. Okay. What I think happens is, is uh, you have a weakness when you got two slits. Right? <coughs> And you still have weakness, but when you wrap it back over, you only have one area that's weak. This side right here, that bark is still holding it in place. So it's about stability. And like I said, normally, these right here, I'll wrap two rubber bands on there, and I'll, I'll tighten it up as tight as I can get it so it don't go over. But there you have it. Any other questions? Thank you, Jim. Mark.